Hello. Welcome, Ed. It's so good to Hello. see you. Good to see you, Lisa. Yeah. How's it going? Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I'm so excited to dig in with you. We're going to talk about authenticity and awareness and how it shows up. And let's start by mm. talking about you. How do you define yourself? How do I define myself? You know, I am a deeply sensitive, very caring and empathetic person who wears all of my senses on my shoulders. You know, I'm one of these folks. I do not like to see people suffer or sadness. I, I have a tendency to take on that kind of sadness and, and people's depression or I take it on right myself. And you know, I'm a very strong person, but I'm also a very authentic and i'm okay with crying i'm okay with expressing emotion and i could take on a lot too which yeah. is an interesting combination right that i can take on a lot yet i'm very good also at expulsing it right not letting it create any kind of toxicity uh, so you know i cry at movies you know <laughs> i don't like to see any elderly eating by themselves you know those kind of things you know get me and when i when I'm watching, for example, if I'm watching YouTube videos, if I see things like when kids surprise their parents who've been working so hard and grinding for years and they surprise them with like paying off their mortgage or buying them a car, those things, yeah, all of a sudden I choke up and start crying. So, I mean, I'm one of those people. And so I like Elton John songs, you know, I like things <laughs> that, that are very emotional, right? But what's cool about that is that it helps me navigate authentically through life speaking uh, about authenticity i feel very deeply when i say you're my friend not only do i mean it but i mean it for life i'm a lifer yeah. so i'm the person that that you can count on because i understand the value of being an advocate for people and being reliable being a reliable advocate mm -hmm. and i know that this life isn't about me it's really about me in your and other people's lives yeah and because of that deep awareness you know it makes me very empathetic but you know i'm also what they call an hsp i'm a highly sensitive person and i kind of wear it with uh, like as a badge of honor to be honest because i love feeling yeah. i don't go numb through life you know i go very tactile very very feeling i love it thank you for that that's such a beautiful description and knowing you and having known you for many years through a business lens i know that you really you do make it about the person and about the relationship and business comes secondary which is so inspiring it to does. me um because you have been in my life for many years in and out and and we've kind of i've moved away even from our physical location and we still remain connected so i really value that about you and it is authentic i love how you said um you experience everything in life and that's true authenticity even though it's challenging sometimes even though because you're sensitive people will gravitate towards you and try to you know s s take from you or you know yeah it does make right? you vulnerable to that and sometimes yeah. you know uh, even though i'm a super i, I it kind of coined, coined a new phrase i call it people passionate not a people person i'm a people passionate person mm -hmm. There's some days where I, I just have to go do this by myself. Mm -hmm. I need to go and reflect, right? So I go to a coffee place and I just sit there and just think about things. That's another thing about me is that I'm yeah. a deep thinker. Yeah, I'm always thinking about my life, my mm -hmm. place in others, recalibrating. What can I do? Not so much always better, but maybe sometimes a little different. Sure. You know, as I get older, you know, I start to reflect more and and I've learned a lot more as well. And so that level of maturity and really mm -hmm. makes me reflect on what I've done and more importantly, what I use with what I've done to do more. Yeah. And to create absolutely. a greater impact. I don't talk much about myself and you can see that in my social feed. That. I really don't yeah. do that. <laughs> it's more about how honestly can I be more of a shining light in other people's lives? Because, you know, we're living in times that are very challenging and there's a lot of emotional challenges out there. And I am the guy that I love to make random phone calls just to say, hey, how are you? No, but for real, how are you? And can we go get coffee, right? I think those things are so important 
you know, that connectedness, I crave it. Yeah. I am not good at that. I am quite the opposite. I need to feel that sense of connectedness, regardless of where you're at. Here's the beauty yeah. of being able to do these video things that even though you moved, we're still. Yeah. Connected. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it's so inspiring. I know you do a Friday where you just go out and network, phone call, coffee, like every Friday you do that. And it's so, it's, it's something I aspire to because I'm an introvert and I can turn it on when I need to, but I need, I need more space than I think the average person needs. Um, because that's I'm also, okay though, Lisa, that's okay. Cause it, it's who you I are. I know it is. Yes. I own it. I'm like, totally I'm going to awesome. Hawaii. I get to be alone. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sometimes those things are superpowers, right? I mean, embrace it's, who it's you really are. It's that yeah, authenticity it's we keep talking about, right? Yeah. And I love that you're honoring what you need, which is, you know, you need connectivity, you know, you need to talk on the phone or better yet be physical in person with somebody because that feeds you, that gives you, you know, that energy, that fuel, whatever to get through the next days or weeks. So yeah. absolutely being authentic means just owning, owning all parts of ourselves, you know, the dark, the light and everything in between. So, so what a beautiful example okay. you are of that. And, and I love hearing about, you have so many cool practices. So I'd love to hear more about like, as you're going into the next phase of your business, of life, whatever, how are you remaining authentic and continuing to honor what you need and build relationships? Great question. You know, it's more in how I communicate. I feel that my conversations with people, because what I do is I lead in, you know how it is, right? When you give somebody permission, mm. then all of a sudden they show up, right? Their authentic mm -hmm. self. So the way I'm giving more permission is by being more authentic. Mm -hmm. So the more I'm authentic in my communication, the more I'm silently, but powerfully giving people permission to be authentic as well so my conversations are very you know they don't have to be mired with a bunch of really big words and <laughs> things that are impressive you mm -hmm. know i don't feel like i need to show anybody impressive vocabulary or resume so mm -hmm. you know i'll say hey what's up as opposed to how are you right i'll say hey what's up right or <laughs> How's it going, dude? Right? If it's the guy, right? So I'm having more of those kind of conversations. And I just, when I walk in, like today, after this, I'm doing a coffee mixer, right? In 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 a neighborhood in the Excelsior. And I know how it's going to go down. I'm just going to come say, hi, hey, how's it going? Right? Or do you live around here? Right? And just come at it from that. That, hi, how's it going? I'm Ed Diaz, the mortgage guy. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not the way it's going to go down. Right? Yeah. I, just, I go in with an, a genuine desire to get to know the person but here it comes their story mm -hmm. i want to know their story as much as i can in a single encounter right and mm -hmm. some of those folks i'm going to parlay into a one-on-one -on -one. that'll happen outside of this event mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and where we'll get to go a little deeper that's the other mm -hmm. thing too i'm doing a lot of follow-ups to do the one-on-ones with people because i do i want to know your story yeah that's beautiful. And how, what does it give you to know people's stories? It does a couple of things. One, it, it feeds that emotional side of feeling authentic. Hmm. Number two, it puts tremendous amount of perspective on how blessed we really are and that the majority mm -hmm. of the things that aren't going our way are really just first world problems. Yeah. Wow. You know, and, and that reminder, because you hear somebody's story, you think you've gone through a lot until you hear somebody else's like, whoa. And it's inspiring because some of these folks, if you just look at them, Lisa, it's like you would never think that they carry around this story with them. Like, whoa. I remember speaking with a lady who who showed me her forearm and she had the tattooed numbers from when she was in in a Nazi camp. Yeah. I mean, to see that was just that moment was an out of body experience. Yeah. And and what a blessing because you had the awareness to ask the question. You know? Yeah, and to that point is, you know, you you're doing, you know, the old ratio, right? 2 to 1, right? You do twice the amount of listening, but the art of asking a lot of really good questions 
is really where that syrupy goodness of conversations lies, right? Because you ask one question open-ended and then all of a sudden they're telling you the story that is just wow, right? Yeah. And then on the other side of it, they'll remember you as that person that was curious, that was inquisitive, that was, you know, genuine and, and asking these questions with interest. And then, and then what does that do for, for business, for example? You know? you know, I never really think about it much because here's, here's where I come with this or where I come from on this topic is that the more authentic you are and the more you spread love, inclusivity and be a resource to people to the outside world i look very lucky lisa i know <laughs> they think it's well, luck. it's not we're we're peeling back the curtain here because totally. you're, the real this, wizard that's the secret yeah that's really the that's it, it right is. the more authentic you are the more you do what you just said the more business you start doing it just it's a side effect it's 100 percent. yeah it's a consequence of, and so, but, but to me, it's a result of not mm -hmm. the focus, right? And yeah. so I just focus on doing those things. And then all of a sudden the business ends up coming, but it's not, it's yeah. not luck. It's just how you want to live, right? Yeah. So for me, it's just how I live, not how I market, right? Which is mm -hmm. what most people would say. Well, how do you market? No, no, this is how I live. Yeah, right? it's and, a paradigm. And that's why I'm always the same person, no matter what the venue. Yeah. I don't change up or do different kind of scripting because I'm doing a coffee event or I'm speaking. You've seen me. I mean, yeah. I'm always the same guy. I know. And that's incredible. <laughs> and it speaks it speaks so highly because um, you know what you're going to get. And I know Ed yes. will always follow up with anyone I send his way and he'll always that's look right. to connect. You're such a great connector too. You're always looking for, which I think is, is a huge um, skill set, but it's something you've perfected. You're always looking for ways to connect people, which is such a gift. Like that is incredible yeah i do think it's one of my superpowers and and there's yeah. and i've been talking about this a lot lately the difference between being a networker and being a connector see the yeah. networker will go to a lot of events collect the business cards but mm -hmm. typically there's not a lot of follow-up after mm -hmm. right it just kind of mm -hmm. dies at the event whereas the heart and soul of a connector is one that goes to these events with an end result in mind and that is to connect the people that they meet to other people that they have already in their network that is night and day because that way you're always being a blessing to other people you know you don't go there to monetize or to try to get something you go there because you know that the people in your network will be blessed by you going see the difference the difference is huge yeah night and day absolutely absolutely well it's a mindset too it's it's um it's a giving mindset versus a receiving mindset it is it is yeah. that's exactly right it's the giver's gain model right mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome so i'm so curious can you think of a time in your life where you were not your authentic self yeah i think when i first started out in the business you know i I had fallen prey to all the advice, you know, read these books, you know, fake it to make it. You got to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, especially you, Ed, because, you know, you're a minority. You got to do three mm. things three times. You got to work three times harder right. than the average person. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have to really watch your vocabulary. You have to speak properly, stand up straight, <laughs> right? Don't slouch, wear a suit, <laughs> right? Wear a suit to bed. <laughs> wear a suit to the shower when you take a shower. <laughs> wear a suit twenty four. Always wear a suit. <laughs> it, it was all these pressures, right? And all the in all the books, you know, page thirteen said, "Yeah, you got to fake it to make it, right? Park far away when you have a terrible car, a junker, you right? Don't park near the entrance." Right? There were all these hacks and techniques, right? Yeah. And so I found myself being a certain way, but yeah. I always knew, like, man. It's just a lot of work. You know I, mean? and I, I don't really, A, I'm not that guy. And two, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. And so I always say that the greatest gift that I've ever given myself has been the gift of permission to be my authentic self. 
Yeah. That's been really the biggest thing. And lo and behold, the more genuine I became, the more I became approachable. And the more approachable mm -hmm. I became, the more business I did. And, and overall, my life, I was happier because then I didn't have to use all these fancy words. Am I capable of it? Of course I am. But is it really who I am? Do I really talk like that? No, it's like kind of getting, you ever get some of these template emails from somebody, <laughs> you know, they don't speak like that. Right. You know, they bought a service mm. that is doing their emails for them. I never wanted to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And um, I think we all have to maybe begin in a, in a way that isn't authentic and we go through the motions or, you know, try to fit ourselves into these spaces where we know we don't fit, but we try it because then in contrast, we can totally break free and be exactly who we're meant to be without exactly any restrictions. Right. And it's such a beautiful way of learning, I think. So there is some purpose into, you know, being restricted, being confined so that the freedom that comes after is just so delicious and so wonderful, you know? hundred percent. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. Well, I love that. So, so how do you, I know, you know, relationship building, connecting really feeds you. What else feeds your authentic self, like your soul? What gives you what you need every day? Besides coffee? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> coffee, obviously, if you know me for coffee, two seconds, done. you know Already coffee got does that. that. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, it's going back to Simon Sinek and when he talked about mm -hmm. why, right? In that mm -hmm. the most popular TED talk ever. It's mm -hmm. to me, it's going back to my why and what's my why? It's really my family, you know, my wife and my son. At the end of the day, that's that's what I, I go back to. And I literally look at my phone and the picture in the morning before I start making phone calls like every day. I don't even think my wife knows this, but Aww. every single day I look at these things. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I get emotional about it, right? I got to yeah. clean up a little bit of tears before I get on a Zoom or, you know, make the phone call. But but that's the truth is that those things just drive me. It drives me. Yeah. It's not even, you know, it's not even things like, you know, buying a house. Although, you know, of course you want to always bless your family with those things. And, you know, I want my son to have a house and all those things. But at the end of the day, I want him to have great core values. And I want him to also know that he fueled me. And that he was the primary reason why I always wanted to live out loud mm. and to accomplish is it's to give him a sense and my wife a sense of security. Because mm. right? that's so huge, right? For many yeah. people, that's a love language, right? It's that sense of security and I get it. And so what, you know, it's so funny because as you know, Lisa, people will ask me, they'll say, man, Ed, how do you do it, man? Like, what you're doing like seven eight appointments a day and you do the mortgages and i see you everywhere and you post and you go to events i said man i have a singular focus and that's just to be a blessing primarily of course to my family and then after them to the rest of the people that become part of my tribe Beautiful. and as you know bng right bay networking group is is my extended family they're my tribe you know yeah. and i think about all of them all the time yeah you do I do, which is why it makes me such a great connector is because I care, yeah. right? And I care about things that I don't monetize. I don't have to monetize. My caring goes way above and beyond yeah. what I monetize. And, you know, sometimes uh, that's good. Sometimes it's not because sometimes you got to focus, right? I mean, if, if you're self-employed, you got to focus on also bringing home the bacon, so to speak. You got to take care of bills. And, and above that, you know, you want to create a sense of success and not have to worry about finances. I love it. I feel like caring is your superpower, really, like being a genuine caring person, which sounds really simple, but it's actually very faceted um, yeah. because you, you have to care about yourself first and care about yourself enough to get up every morning and make those phone calls and be self-employed. And then you care about your family because you want to mm -hmm. support them. And then others, as you're saying, these like circles of of community um but it, yeah me, i agree and, and above, above and beyond caring person above like, and beyond yes yeah. and that's always going to be kind of like tattooed right yeah but you know there's a difference and i want to talk about this just for a second the difference between being self-full and self-ish 
Mm -hmm. There is a big difference. They sound kind of alike, and I think a lot of people mistake them. Being selfish is when all you do is care about yourself. But when you're self full, is when you know that in order to be an intense lover of all people, you also have to love yourself. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Whether it's your emotional health, your physical health, your spiritual health. In my case, all three. You got to take care of those three pillars in your life, and that makes you a super caring people. Being able to do more than what let's just call it the average person does. Why is it that I have twenty four hours just like everybody else, but I have a tendency to achieve a ton? It's not because I'm trying to check off boxes. It's not. It's because I care so much, and that so many people come to me. Because they feel my authenticity and in my genuine person, they come to me because they know that with me, they have a safe place that they can talk. I can't tell you how many people. Because remember, I'm in the mortgage business, so I get to know a lot about people's finances that even other family members don't know.、Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there's a lot of those conversations where they're telling me secrets that they haven't told other people. Wow, it's crazy. But because I have that aura of look, I get it. Yeah. And I, you come here with me. There's no judgment. There's a hundred percent confidentiality, and I'm just here to be a resource, even if it's just to sit there and listen because you just want to talk. Yeah. And there's no mortgage involved or anything. You just want to talk with me. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that's an amazing gift. I think most most humans. Uh, desire that space, a non-judgmental person that will listen, like really listen, really not listen. think of the next thing that they're going to say in response, <laughs> not judge them.、Um, I experience that too. That's why strangers will tell me their deepest secrets because I also hold that container of like, look, I'm not going to judge you. You can say whatever you want to me, and and it's beautiful, and I'm not going to tell anyone even. <laughs> But I think that's that's people absolutely perceive that in you. So they that, feel it. They yeah, feel it,、right? absolutely. And, and you know that that fills my bucket. It continues、yeah. to overflow because,、mm -hmm. for me, when somebody trusts me and loves on me, that's the greatest gift I can ever ask from a human being.、Mm -hmm. There's, there's, you can't write a check that big. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you can't. Right.、Yeah. That connection is amazing. It makes that coffee that I love so much taste even better. <laughs> yeah, you you really feed on that. It's so, I it's feed on it big time. <laughs> you know how I am on one on ones, man. And coffee talk. Oh my gosh, that to me is like a it's a staycation, right? <laughs> it really is. I love doing them, so I do so many of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so yeah, you're just you're just having fun all the time. It sounds like all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. I, I tell you, I'll tell you a little funny story, and for all of you to hear this one, this is a really funny story. So I was about 21 years old, and I was working for a bank, and I was,、uh, I had 35 branches I needed to go visit, and I was doing their their business banking. And my boss Wendy calls me, and she says, "Hey, I need to talk to you." Said, oh yeah, what's up, Wendy? I go, "Why, why so serious?" Right? Because you know me, I'm always joking. She goes, "Well, we got to complain about you." I, said, I go, "You're joking, right?" She goes, "No, I'm serious." I go, why? Well, people at a certain branch that I can't disclose are saying that you're making a lot of personal calls during the day when you're there. I said, Wendy, you know me. I would never do that. You guys pay me to do this job and to do it well. I don't take it for granted. You know how appreciative I am of everything I have, including this job. She said, "I don't know where it comes from." And then all of a sudden, it dawned on me. I go, "I think I know." Come here, Wendy. Come in. Come into the office. So she comes in. Just hold on for a second. I go. So I, I make a phone call. Hey, how's it going, John?、And、she can't hear, right? So I put it on speaker, and John says, "Hey, what's going on, Ed?" I never said my name, but John recognized my voice, right? <laughs> so how you been, man? Awesome. Oh, totally great! You know what? It's so great that you're actually calling me because, believe it or not, man, I was thinking about you two days ago, and 
and I need to come and talk to you about getting, you know, an equity line of credit for my business. And so I'm like this to Wendy, I go, that's the personal call. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, no problem. You know what? Let, let's, uh, are you available tomorrow at, you know, 11 a.m.? He goes, yeah, man, stop by. I said, all right, man, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye. I hung up. I go, that's the problem that they perceive, Wendy. It's just that I am personable. <laughs> not making personal calls i am personable in my calls that's amazing and she just sat there looked at me and she started laughing i said <laughs> she goes i suspected it but i had to bring it up to you so she had a, <laughs> a meeting with everybody and said look we're not going to name names but something interesting and great has come out of a complaint mm -hmm. that was made against ed and i'm standing there in this wow. big meeting good for her so I will let Ed take it from here. And I did the same thing and I did a, a mock conversation, right? And and I know who it was who did who complained. Yeah. But, the, but Wendy said, there's a lesson here, guys. This is make sure that your job is an extension of your life and your personality. Mm -hmm. So this complaint is actually a wonderful example of somebody who sows who they really are and to what they do to the point where people mistake his approach man you could hear a pin drop i know the i'm sure all oh, their jobs are like and, and you know the lady who because i was looking yeah. at her because she she didn't know that i knew but i knew she, <laughs> you could just tell <laughs> she <Yeah. was> frazzled <laughs> well that's just it right sometimes when you're right. fully bright and fully embodied and fully authentic people and are present. threatened by that yes and yeah. you know what? I think that it was a silent but powerful lesson that she learned. You know, so if I, and I didn't hold a grudge yes. or nothing because yeah. I understand if yeah. I were in her shoes and I'm across the way and I hear these and me laughing and carrying on like I'm talking to a friend, I could see how somebody would say, hey, you look, these are business hours, right? You, you need to do your job, right? But she made an assumption, right? <laughs> As opposed to getting the facts, but. Right. I just thought that that was such a, I'll never forget that because yeah. I was 21, I'm going to be 55. So that was a little bit ago, right? But I, <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday and it was such, yeah. it was such a wonderful example of who I am Yeah, and have been my whole life. It's amazing. I love that. What a great story and mm -hmm. what a lesson for all of us, right? Like it's not what it seems and being who you are is the most important thing always, despite yeah. what other people think. Um, and sometimes they might get, you know, offended, but that's okay. That's their problem, not yours. <laughs> yeah, somebody said uh, something to me. It's like, if you don't have haters, you're not working hard enough. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's always going to be, and you know, for the most part, if you really peel back that onion on the person who doesn't like you, I'm going to say something that's really impactful that I want you to hear closely. Here's the reason they're saying to themselves, there's something about you that I hate about me. Yeah. It's a trigger. Mm -hmm. They wish that they can have that superpower that you have. Yeah. And they don't, they either don't have it or are not willing to work to get it. That's it, right? We all have the ability and we just all yes. have different blocks in our way. So we can choose to go down the path of what is he doing? I'm going to tell the boss on him. Or we could say, what is he doing? That's interesting. How can I do that? Let me go talk to him. What is he doing? Right. It's a choice. Totally. And notice that your inflection on the same words, same sentence, a completely right? different feel to the sentence. Different energy. Depending on yeah. how you put it and you enunciate and you're right your energy my yeah. gosh so be careful totally. what you say and how you say it right oh god our words are so powerful we're constantly creating with our powerful. words so especially the words we say to ourselves that's where it really True. begins in the mind so if we're able to really peel back and step away and take away the emotion at times from the words that are the things we're seeing we can you know be neutral and observe and just say yeah. wow this is bringing up anger because I want to be that or whatever, but that requires some consciousness. <laughs> yeah. And the consciousness, a lot of times requires a little bit of work, right? Right. Always. But that work Always. is good. That's good stuff. 
I'm always constantly introspective. You know, I'm always thinking, right? I'm always yeah. working. <laughs> <laughs> what anything special you're working on now? Yeah, you know, I've uh, really gotten motivated more and more to finish my book. Yeah. And to really hone my passion to go and speak in public. Ah. You know, that's another thing that is definitely something that I know I must. Yeah. Is there anything holding you back from it? Focusing on spreading that need and asking for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saying, hey, look, I want to go speak in front of companies. Who do you know? Yeah. Can you help me? Yeah. Right. That sort of thing. That's it. Mm. But I'm I'm completely overcoming that and Good. putting it more in my consciousness. So when I am having conversations, that it comes up. Because what in, what was happening is that I would hang up and then go, Oh, I forgot to. Yeah. Right. Good. What would you speak about to these companies? Like what's a topic that you could bring? Well, there's, so there's a lot of things, right? But typically I would probably start on the sales department side because I've done so many sales is teaching the art of authentic advice based sales. Mm. Stop selling. Yeah. Start connecting and how to do that. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yes. Perfect. That's the perfect course you're meant to teach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as you know, I do a lot of it, right? I do all of it every day. All day. Yeah. All day. Every day. <laughs> all all day, day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the love of it is what keeps me doing it. And yeah. I believe that when you force somebody to go sell, it actually dims their light. Yeah. But if you cater to them connecting with the client and being an advisor as opposed to a salesperson, things shift that's a huge paradigm shift and then people yeah. spread their wings because now they feel so light yeah it's the same thing it's like that confinement you're forcing anything yes. forced is a confinement and doesn't feel good nobody wants to be forced into anything yeah, but if you're down. yeah taking the flip side of that coin sharing being a resource you know a more giving kind mm -hmm. of and walking place. away you're not when your product yeah. or service doesn't benefit them and say, hey, right. look, my stuff is not not conducive to you, but you know what? I know somebody who is because I'm a connector. Right. Boom. And then they remember you and then they refer you to somebody who is a better fit or when they are a better fit, they're calling you, not anybody right. else. Right. Totally. Done. Course, course ready to go. Done. Ready to go. <laughs> Press print. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I look forward to that. I'm so excited to see you put that out there because it is exactly yes, yes. what you're you're living, breathing, and now you'll be teaching it. So, so that's mastery. Yep, I'm teaching my first course next Thursday. Oh, nice! Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually stoked because I wish I could do it right now. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> You know, I get anxious because I actually one of those weird souls that loves to speak in public. <laughs> so rare and so wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, anything else to be said or shared while we're here? Well, all I want to say is, look, I give everyone watching this permission to be your authentic self. Sometimes we need to hear that. And I will tell you as a person who's going into his mid 50s, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than just being who you are, regardless of what anyone says or the going concern in society. You know, because sometimes we go in waves and no, you got to wear tight jeans because that's what's in. No, yeah. you do exactly who you are at all mm -hmm. times and you will attract the people that you want in your life. Not everybody's going to be for you, but that's okay. Think about it. If you had 30 friends, you wouldn't have time to be real an authentic friend to all 30 we forget sometimes that it's can't be friends to everybody so select your friends and your tribe the people you surround yourself with both business and and personal and a lot of times those are the, same. the same yeah <laughs> pick them wisely because you know time flies i mean look mm. we're three years since the pandemic i mean how fast did that go 
you know, here we are right now, ending February 2023. According to the Jetsons, we were all supposed to have jet cars at this point, right? But look how fast things are flying. It's going so fast. Don't spend another day being somebody else. Mm. You don't need it. Whoever told you that, they need to do the work too, right? Mm. Surround yourself with great people. Read a lot. Nourish yourself. Take care of yourself. Be self-full, right? Yeah. That's my message to planet Earth today. Beautiful. Oh, it's always so nice to just be in this space with you. You're so inspiring. No, I'm so likewise. grateful to have you in my well, life. I'm always inspired by people like you. You know, it's the people I surround myself. You guys are the ones who fuel me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I wouldn't be this way were it not because of people, right? Mm. Yeah. S words from a true connector. I mean, really. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Thank Such you. a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you for this opportunity, please. Yeah, my pleasure. You have a great day. Thanks. Thanks.